Yeah. Let's do this. Hey, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I hope you're all doing well. Um, Romantic Rose is back on the easel and I'm really looking forward to getting back to painting on this piece. I'm totally blocking it. Um, anyway, it's a big piece. So I'm trying to fit myself and her in here. So what I'm going to be doing today, um, this has a lot more to go. Um, I'm going to make floating rose petals coming down the piece. Um, I'm going to start with a little white and pink up here, and then they're gradually going to darken. And then this whole bottom part down here, that is going to be um, just layers of rose petals. So this is a really cool um, demonstration to give you. I've got a piece of acetate and I just drew out, I don't know if you can see that, I drew out some uh, basic shapes for rose petals. So I'm going to go cut these out and I'm going to, you know, just randomly put some pieces up here. So it's going to start lighter up here and then really heavy down on the bottom. So um, join me and I'll show you a little bit how this is done with the airbrush and acetate. I prefer the thicker acetate and I'll go through the materials when um, I start the demo. So I got my workstation all set up and um, I just got to go mix some colors, cut out the shapes on this and I'm ready to go. So I'll see you soon. All right, so here we are. We are all set to get painting. I've got my canvas set up on the easel and I've got my workstation off to the right. So let me show you a little bit of the materials that I work with here. Um, here is the stencil, sorry for the fingers. Here's a stencil that I cut out. Can you see that? Yeah. Those are the rose petal shapes, and they don't look like much, right? But you'll see how I kind of overlay a bunch of these in different color tones and uh, get the effect that I'm looking for. I also have my silk flower rose petals to use for reference because these aren't going to be just a flat color. And my tablet. I've got all my reference pictures ready to go. So let me ask you what you think about this. I, I love everything that I'm looking at here. They give me a lot of form and shapes and shadowing. But this one I really fell in love with um, because of the little hearts in there. I hadn't, I was making the rose petals in the shape of hearts, but I really think I like the idea of putting like tiny little hearts embedded in the image um, because Romantic Rose is part of a carousel series um, that represents every month. So she is for Valentine's Day and I thought that um, might look really cool in there. So let me know what you think about that. Uh, now to cut the acetate, this was a little bit thinner. I don't know what grade this is because this is a scrap that I just pulled out from another job. Um, I don't know what grade it is, but it's a little thinner than I like because it doesn't cut quite as well. So um, you really need to have a sharp, sharp blade. And do not offer your fingers to the blade because that hurts. Um, so what I do, I would have gone through about two blades just for, you know, just for that. Like I said, this acetate didn't cut as well that I like it to. But what I do, um, as I'm working, I keep a sharpening stone and keep that knife really sharp. Because all I'm really using is the tip 
and that's such a waste to throw it out if you don't need to so you know get as much use as you can out of your materials all right up here um that is a coffee creamer container I'm just gonna grab my airbrush Oops, little wreck in the place sorry for the shadows we're putting in new lighting so um kind of working around what i got right now so when i clean out my airbrush it's got the perfect size opening i can just spray it in there and i've got rags in there and that catches all that overspray and uh water when i'm cleaning it out um hold on i've got my airbrush like totally wrapped around the back of that so I don't trip over the hose. And I always keep a spray bottle with a little bit of dish soap and water in it for catastrophes. This here, I can't think of the uh, brand right now, but this is amazing. I can put this on my tablet and use my reference that I use my tablet for everything for that. Um, or I can put my phone on there. So while I'm recording the demo, I'll have my phone hooked on that. And that is really awkward because that's actually between me and the painting. I work vertically, so it's really hard to get a good camera angle without having the, the, <laughs> the phone recording like right in your face all right so i've got my colors mixed here i just have to put my caps on and i use a variety of paints um different colors and different brands work great golden paints are are good that's been my go-to create createx paints are are pretty good and i like that createx has cut down on the odor of their paint um, it used to be really hard for me to work with because the odor was pretty harsh um, so good job createx thank you for that i do still wear a mask uh, you know when i'm working in smaller spaces like i am now so um i use an iwata eclipse i love this airbrush uh, there's some things that I would change like they don't have the screw in the top maybe they changed that lately but it's a pretty good and affordable airbrush um, this airbrush holder is is really handy too um, I don't know the brand for that so I want to eclipse and um, there's my really messy uh, paint box I've had that for about 30 years. It's made out of wood and it has taken a beating. I can't even tell you how happy I am with that thing. Um, I use a silent compressor. This one is a Silair compressor and it's okay. I've had it for about 15 years, but I do have to say, um, I used to use June Air compressors and I would take them hands down over Sile Air any day because Sile Air um, doesn't have a cooling fan in it from what they explained to me. Um, so it will overheat and I can only get about an hour and a half of work out of it before it gets tired and needs to take a nap. So that means I need to stop working and find something else to do. So here she is. Romantic Rose. And we're going to add some floating pebble <laughs> petals on there. And I'll show you how that's done. It's, you know, it's nice to work with these freeform masks. Um, so let's get started. we got a lot of work to do.
Okay, so unexpected things always come up in art. Being an artist is being a problem solver. Um, so the thing I did not expect today was I haven't worked out in the elements for a very long time. Um, and I didn't think it was very uncomfortable to be working out in my airbrush garage. That's where I do my airbrush work because I can blow the box, get the fumes out, um, and, uh, you know, keep my lungs safe. So, um, I didn't expect that, but it wasn't a horrible thing. I think what you need to understand with acrylic paints is that um, when they remain wet, because they dry so quickly and coming out of the airbrush, there is so little amount of paint coming out. And normally, as soon as it hits the surface, I can touch it. It is dry, but not today. So New England weather um, kind of took a hold of the situation, but I reclaimed all of that business because what you can do, what you saw in the video, um, if the paint remains wet, you can maneuver it in a way that you can't, like when it comes out of the airbrush, it's like, boom, done, dry. It's stuck on there, you know, that's it. So I was able to uh, maneuver the paint a little bit and give it a little bit texture. What I did not like, was having to use a hair dryer. That's really a risky thing to do on a big piece of canvas like this on stretcher bars. Because like I said uh, before, the last thing I wanna do is compromise the frame to this canvas. This is a really nice gallery wrap canvas they are not cheap, and I want to keep it the, the integrity of that in place. So I thought it was better. Um, you know, I'm hoping that you got the gist of what I was doing down here with the layers. And if you go back to my website and look at Fishbowl Helmet, um, that was the first time I tried anything like this with a, you know, very basic stencil overlay. And I had never painted gravel before. I had no idea how to do it. So I just cut out some really tiny rough shapes and just went back and forth, which is what I will continue to do down here um, for the base petals. And the layers will continue to build. And once I get the basic shapes down, it's like a no brainer. You just kind of work around the puzzle and um, work with those shapes that you have. And now I've got my dark bases down and I'm gonna start building up on the highlights. So I'm happy with it so far and uh, Next time I paint, I'll put on the heater. So for up here, I work with your background. Don't try to, I, I put white highlights up here. Highlights, not petals. So work with your background. Use that background color and let it work for you. These, I'm loving the shape of them. I just did the outside of the petals and, and let the purple kind of remain in, in the middle where you would have a fold of the uh, petal. So um, <clears throat> I didn't want to, I, I like to do these sections and then step away and then look at them again and like I'll see this in a whole different light
tomorrow and the next day. And then I'll go back and I'll put more petals over here. And then I'll start building up on the base because the base, I don't want it to be um, super detailed, but I want it to give the impression that um, these are rose petals on the bottom and this part will blend into that. I might add a few more green leaves. Tell me what you think about that. I would love to know. Um, I don't want to do too much green, um, but I'd love to know what your take on that. Like, should I blend the whole thing in, which is what I think I'm going to do. And I asked you about that one reference picture, which the more I think about it, the more I'm loving the idea of having like not crazy but this is valentine so this is a valentine painting in my carousel series so this carries the whole theme i've got a cupid over here she's covered with dozens of roses and um i love the idea of putting just a little bit of confetti very faint nothing too strong of little hearts. So would they, tell me what you think. Um, would they start white to go with the white pebble? Right. Pebbles would not work with this painting, by the way. So I'm thinking just real subtle little confetti hearts, like trinkling down and then scattered down on the bottom. I, I like it, and I would love to know what you all think. So, um, yeah, she's got a oh, good ways to go yet, but I'm loving it. And when this painting is done, she'll be done by February. And the original right here will be up for sale. Um, prints will be ready for Valentine's and I'm I'm fidgety so I have to hold something like my glasses in my hand all the time um so <laughs> prints of this beauty will be on sale for Valentine's and I can't wait for 2021 because I've got a couple new products coming in to um put my images on other items besides note cards and prints. So stay tuned for that. I'm really, I, I can't wait. I can't wait. So, um, <laughs> can't wait. Um, so yeah, this, this beautiful thing is going to come out in uh, February 2021 as a completed piece. I've got a lot of items that are going to go along with this. So thank you so much for coming and I hope you're all doing well and um, you know being safe. Be safe. Keep your family safe and um, no matter what you have to do this year to stay connected with your friends and families be wise. Be well. Love to you all. Have a great rest of November. Take care.